It's that time again. We're doing plant the plant power half hour and continuing our conversation about the uh, ancient oils of the Bible. I'm here with my friend and my business partner, Paula Johnson. Paula is an integrative health and nutrition coach with At Craving Joy, and I'm a holistic living expert. I do digital marketing advice for folks in the uh, in the wellness space, and we want to take you on a different journey at this time of the year. We're talking about the essential oils of the Bible. I'm going to hold the mic one more second. I was, you know, I'm taking a lot of things from this book. And here's something else that I just opened the page to. And it says, creation can't be replicated in a lab. Nope. Mm -hmm. One drop of oil contains 40 million trillion molecules. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> Um, it has it written out with a lot of zeros and it says our bodies contain 100 trillion cells. So any single drop of essential oil can cover every cell in your body with tens of thousands of these life giving molecules. We're specifically focusing on the oils of the Bible, but I think they knew something that we didn't learn till much later when it came to science and the lab. And we're using this book as our reference as we're talking about ancient oils. Wow, Paula. That's amazing. Right? Yeah, we know mm -hmm. prayer helps build us up. Oils help build us up and get us into a better health state because when we add each of them to our body, it just improves our situation no matter where we're at. But both of them together, it's not one plus one equals two. It's like equals five, 10, like it, it's exponential when we can bring those together because they have just this compounding effect of raising the energy of our body. So I love that combination of pulling these together, but you can feel the difference after you've experienced it. But also when you can look at the science behind this, that's where it's like, okay, it's not just me thinking this. There's a lot more to this that you can totally geek out and go down that rabbit hole of research and things like that too. So super fun, no matter which angle you're coming at it from spiritual, um, scientific, or just nature, you know, pulling them all together. It just feels amazing to improve our health physically, emotionally, spiritually, everything right <laughs> yes I love that you said geek out and go down the rabbit hole because yeah I only do that every single time <laughs> yeah you know so okay so we're doing four oils today we're going to kick it off with hyssop this is just a follow-up from the last uh last uh 30 minute 40 minute session that we did we're gonna go a little deeper on these four oils uh, but the first one we referenced a number of times hyssop and the, the the blood of the lamb and putting that over the door. But I actually wanted to share where we got that from this week. In Genesis 37, we read about Joseph's brother selling him to the myrrh traders and how his journey to Egypt resulted in the nation of Israel relocating to Egypt. Over 400 years after that, the Israelites were still in Egypt, serving as slaves to the Egyptians. In Exodus 5, Moses began renegotiating with Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh refuses and the Egyptians were subjected to 10 plagues sent by God against the people. Wow, the 10th plague was on the firstborn when we talked about that one. But I wanted to bring that plague piece of it into it because many of us know that this thieves oil thieves um, concoction, you know, thieves drink or the thieves spices. There's a, there's a name for it. And the reason that it's called the, 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 the brand or the, or not the brand, but the, um, the recipe is called the thieves brand is because the spice traders at that time had these spices, these different spices in their pockets and the spices would release those oils and they were able to stay healthy during the times of some of the, like, some of the plagues were able to keep people healthy. So um, the curses came, but the solutions were there. Like the remedies for things were there. How does that apply to today? You're going to, I'm doing then, you're doing now. What are our modern uses of some of these spices and the plagues? Specifically, let's bring in hyssop. Yeah. So there's a lot of emotional benefits for oils. And when we can look at not just um, 
physical healing, but emotionally they can be used for a variety of things. You talked about ancient times. They're used, they were actually used for a lot of rituals and medicine, right? Um, they were symbols of cleansing and baptism and the, the forgiveness of sins in the Hebrew culture. Emotionally, hyssop can really help us to face the world and resist the urge to withdraw. I don't know about you, but like the past few years, I have many moments where I'm just like, no, I'm good. I just want to hermit here at home for a while. Yeah. So this can help us um, deal with that. Like, why, why are we avoiding going out? Why are we avoiding doing the things that we want to do? Um, it can also help give us a strength in our personal boundaries. It can also help benefit those who are affected by other people's moods and emotions, helping clear away confused thoughts and negative emotions. You know what I'm talking about when you go into a room and that crabby person is there and then all of a sudden you're the crabby person too. So this is helpful to help establish your own personal boundaries. You can acknowledge what they're going through but you don't have to carry that for them. So this is a great way to assist your body with helping create those emotional boundaries on there. Um, it's also a good oil for cre um, stimulating creativity oh. or to use in meditation. So lot, uh, really versatile. We can use it in many different ways. Um, so a lot of people like to add this in as a perfume blend um, applying it, um, with some other oils, make a little room spritz or a, a body spray easily for themselves, but just diffusing it with orange. That's, that's my solution with almost everything. Put it in your diffuser. If you don't like it by itself, add a little that's orange right. in there too. And it just makes it a little lighter and brighter. Um, but this is this one's really versatile, but it has a lot of powerful like emotional benefit to it too because it it's so impactful and probably because of the ties that it has into biblical history, right? It was and used cleansing so and detoxifies by yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So many important ways in the past. And again, it can be used so many important ways now too. So I have a little scripture here. Um, we, you know, we've sprinkled that throughout. So here's the one for today. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished. And so that scripture would be fulfilled. Je fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the, on the stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And that's from John 19, 28 and 30. And we had referenced that in the last video. And I just wanted to give some clarity around that. Like, what did that actually look like? What did the, what did the scripture say about it? So very powerful, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Number two, let's talk about... Let me see, what did we pick? Aloes, aloes, also known as sandalwood. Aloes, when we were talking about this sandalwood before, we were talking about how the wealthy men who wanted to follow Jesus, but didn't want to come out and say that they were following him, how they supported him with their funds, with what they had available to them. And so uh, Joseph of, Arma I always say this wrong, Arimathea, Thank you, biblical scholars, for uh, sending me how to say that appropriately. Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea was an extremely wealthy and prominent man within the Jewish community. He had secretly become a follower of Jesus. He risked a lot in requesting Jesus's body and placing it within his own tomb. The mixture of myrrh and sandalwood he used would have been extremely costly. Nicodemus brought a volume of oil equal to around $150,000 to $200,000 in today's dollars. And they used this mixture to anoint the body, to embalm the body, and to um, pay respect to the body. How do we use it today? I, I just have to pause there, like imagining, 
you know, funerals are expensive doing this whole process. But imagine one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars of fragrant oils being part of that burial process. Or, um, wow, yeah. like that was really honoring how special Jesus was that they were giving so hugely in that way. Yeah, incredible. Uh, today, sandalwood is really mostly used for relaxing the mind. Um, it gives you a really great sense of stillness, calm, clarity. And for us uh, overthinkers, over worriers, this is a golden one. This is super <laughs> helpful. Um, you know, that's my thing. So sandalwood's a great one to have in there. So this is a great one I can diffuse. Again, I'm going to add orange to this when I'm diffusing it, but sandalwood is also a great one that I love to apply topically. We talked previously about it's great for skin, so it's often added for a lot of DIY um, skin lo moisturizers, lotions. Um, Young Living also has an amazing new sandalwood lotion that I love already done for those people that are too busy to DIY. They just want it done. That's a great one to, to lean into. Um, but it's so nourishing for the skin, but more importantly for the emotions too, it's going to really help, um, give that sense of calm, a sense of reality, especially in, um, insecure or codependent relationships. This is a really good one to bring in to help people find and identify self. Um, it's really good for relaxing fear or dread of the future. I don't know how many of us worry about what's happening later today, tomorrow, next week, next year, the rest of my life. Like, okay, bring on the sandalwood. I need a little, bring me down and, and help um, calm that overthinking obsession. <laughs> um, it's a really good one to pair with um, patchouli. If you need some help with detachment, it, it can pair well with vetiver if you have that obsessive overthinking. And it pairs really well with geranium or jasmine for that nervous exhaustion. And then of course, orange and ylang, ylang is also great pairing with this for some of the nervous tension in there. So very versatile, can be used in combination with a lot of things. But again, think of it for just bringing that sense of calm, clarity, slowing down the overthinking piece yeah. of it. Yeah, it's a good one to have uh, nearby all the time. <laughs> Who knew that the, I mean, you don't need to buy a ton of oils. They're so versatile. Like you said, you, you repeat that word versatile, versatile on every single oil, versatile, because they have more than one mm -hmm. use. It's not, it's not like a this for that kind of a thing. Um, they, they work in conjunction with our bodily functions, with nature, with our rhythms, and they're provided, they've been provided for thousands of years as remedies to support the body. So how do we want to bring those in? How do we want to bring those in? All right, another scripture. Taking Jesus's body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. That was in accordance with the Jewish burial custom. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And again, that was John 19, 38 and 42. So the other piece that we were talking about with Joseph um, is John 19 as well. So all of that, you, you know, reading through John 19, you can see how they cared for and, and paid respect to Jesus's body and uh, how much they, they knew, you know, they had him for such a short period of time and he only spoke for about three years, he, um, but yet bonded with so many people and um, people just knew, people just knew that he was the savior. He was the Messiah. And they paid that homage, that reference, that reverence to him in that fine, in, in his final moments, in that final time that they had with him. Cedarwood, 
You know, cedarwood is believed to be the first oil ever distilled. And cedarwood, it's that hard wood that so many of the doors and buildings and structures were made out of. And it's been used in the embalming process for over 5,000 years, according to some science, some research. Holy moly. Uh, it's really high in sesquiterpenes, which allow it to pass through the blood brain barrier. So it gets into the brain, into the emotional centers of the brain, and it helps people sleep at night. It's oftentimes used, you know, over the pituitary gland or over the forehead, you know, so it goes right into the brain area. And it's known to take away some of the, um, the stress, the tension. I'm curious, you know, that's what they used it for then. I'm curious, you know, are there other different uses for it now compared to what or is it the same you know are we just repeating those same uses or have we added some things do we have some new discoveries what's on the list for this one Paula <laughs> yes um cedar wood definitely yes still used for calming still using for helping with the brain it pairs really well with lavender for sleep overnight so either applying it to the head or diffusing it's a great way to use that it's also often used in um, a hair mask. You can make a DIY hair mask using some cedar wood, um, some coconut oil, and just letting that sit in the hair for a half an hour before you wash it out. So it's a great one to help strengthen the hair and um, heal that. And of course, coconut oil is going to be very moisturizing and soothing for the hair too. I wonder if that would help with thinning hair. Cause I have like some of that hormonal lady thinning hair on the top of my head. <laughs> I know rosemary, love... like rosemary is oftentimes found rosemary and, ce yeah. and, and uh, cedar wood together. And cedar wood. Mm -hmm. We need yeah, to put some great. recipes um, in our email campaign, girl. I think, yes. all right, folks, if you haven't signed up for the e-course already, take this opportunity to do that. You can go to the website uh, and and, uh, and find that there. Either the Plant Power Half Hour has the link or Herbs and Oils of the Bible uh, would allow you to get into our website. Sign up for the e-course, grab the 100 plus 120 uses of essential oils of the Bible. And now we will have recipes on there. Give us a little bit of time. We'll get those recipes up because I want that personally for me. I don't mm -hmm. have that one, so... Thank you. Yeah, what else? Sorry, I, can't guess. I know. <laughs> Any others on your list? Um, cedarwood, again, it's another versatile or adaptogenic type oil. Mm -hmm. So it can also be used for strength and endurance, especially when we're facing some kind of disappointment or uncertainty. We all need a little extra boost of strength to get through that. Um it can also be helpful for when there is excessive um, self-reliance or strong will. <laughs> I picked mm. the right scripture for this one. <laughs> <laughs> it can also help encourage feelings of belonging or awareness to support systems. So looking to where can we get support and how can we use this to help each other as well as ourselves. Um, this one, cedar wood, is actually one of the main ingredients in our stress away blend. So it's really helpful for comforting um, and releasing painful or negative emotions. So think of, you know, we want to be less stressed. Cedar wood's a good component for that. Um, cedarwood pairs really well with thyme and pine to support a low morale as well. So that's a good combination. And another combination is pairing cedarwood with ginger for feelings of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So again, a lot of a good emotion impact as well as physical when we're talking about skin and hair components or we're talking about calming, centering, quieting the busy mind to help us sleep. So adaptogenic <laughs> to what our bodies need. Excellent. Yeah. I chose, uh, you know, it says, so Solomon built, you know, talk about strong and mighty and maybe mm -hmm. a little stubborn. And uh, yeah, so it's Solomon strong built. Will. <laughs> So Solomon built the temple and completed it. He lined it, its interior walls with cedar boards, 
paneling them from the floor to the ceiling of the temple and covering the floor of the temple with planks of juniper. So interesting, they paired it with juniper, that uh, that super piney smell and when you're walking on it. So um, pine also uplifting, you know, that that's an uplifting oil. So interesting how they paired that. There's a few more in here about cedar wood. We're not going to give them all to you today because we want to encourage you to go do some of your own research. Check out what other uh, verses are available out there. There are over a thousand references to essential oils, herbs in the Bible. So there's no loss for uh, for research to be done. Like there's plenty to go look up. Our last one is cypress. Let me take a quick gander here and I have all my tabs. Cypress, another hard wood. It says here that uh, the hardwood of cypress, um, Greeks used the cypress to carve statues of their gods. And these cypress trees were planted throughout Mediterranean cemeteries, which is kind of interesting that, that you know, what, how do you choose what you're going to put in those cemeteries? What was the symbolism? So planting it in the cemeteries symbolized life after death and how life has begun after death. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, supports feelings of security and stability. Being supportive of the immune system and cardiovascular systems, it is rich in monoterpenes. Uh, the records for Cyprus date back 1800 eight, to 1800 BC mentioning cypress oil back that long ago. So again, these oils have been around for centuries and we're just now diving into some of the more um, science-based research that's been done on these oils. So we're trying to take away the fear and encourage you to go on a journey of exploration with these. Buying a kit or using a kit, 10 of them, it's a great place to start. Uh, what are our uses today? What have we discovered for Cypress oils, Paula? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. This oil is, you know, available separately, but it's in this oils of scripture set that we're talking about this month. It's also part of the raindrop technique. Yeah. So it's a great combination for physically and emotionally um, supporting the body through a special raindrop massage technique with that you drop it on the feet or and you can also drop it down the spine as well so really supportive there when I open the bottle and I smell cypress this is um a, a softer evergreen kind of scent to me it's not sharp like pine yeah. it's more gentle and I think um I think this was one of the first um, evergreen oils that I had gotten besides um, the woodsy ones like frankincense. So in the beginning, this is what I would grab and diffuse around my artificial Christmas tree because it was kind of close to the smell of real trees, right? Yeah, for sure. So it was really helpful there. Um but any of the evergreen type ones, you can easily put them on, soak some toothpicks with the oil and hide them in your artificial tree or around your home to kind of have this passive diffuser of this little mini toothpick. Um, so you can experience this because it's such a great one for, again, calming um, things down and really helping you feel grounded. This one, again, is also amazing for skin and hair and all those wellness benefits it's also really good for stress and for grief too this is a hard time of year for many people thinking about people that are no longer with us or challenges that come up um but struggles that are a little bit harder during this season so this can be um, a really helpful one to support the body through grief and healing in that process, giving them a little bit more security, a little bit more grounding feeling in there. Um, Cypress can help either tighten things that are loose and soothe things that are tight. So again, it's one of those adaptogenic phenomenons that have essential oils where the molecule molecules 
really know exactly what to do in the body based on its its priority need. Um, so really beneficial there. But um, this one I just love for the smell of it. I'm drawn to it. Um, so it's an easy one for me to grab and just use in whatever way I feel led to that day, whether it's just putting a drop on my wrist for some calming and centering, throwing it in my diffuser, of course, with orange again, or whatever uh -huh. strikes my fancy that day, um, or just putting a few drops around my home is helpful too. So I love, love this one. I've been diffusing it. Just, we talked about it being a uh kind of like mild or sweeter than pine and I so I've been diffusing it to get that real Christmas tree smell in the mm -hmm. house it's like <gasps> heavenly I, I mix it in with the pine a little bit you know it just kind of softens it but it really make it really feels like you have that real Christmas tree one of my favorite mm -hmm. things to do walking through the forest in the fall is to touch the trees and the branches and I love that smell it is beautifully up uplifting and uh and I miss it. I miss it during parts of the year. I look forward to that during the fall months. So it says, and the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. And I believe that's in Genesis. I didn't write that down, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, all of these plants are here for our benefit. How do you want to get started using them? You know, the people that we're talking about here in the Bible, they're real people, just like you and I. They have real challenges, just like the rest of us. And there are resources available to us through uh, through what nature has provided, what nature has left here for us, what God has given us to use in the healing of our mind, our emotions, our physical body. If you haven't started down this journey yet, and we've we've sparked an interest. Please reach out. You know, Paul and I would love to go deeper with you on any of these or get you started, whether it's one oil or a kit that has many oils in it. Uh, where do you want to start your journey on this uh, on this wellness path? And if you're already along the journey, let us know how you're doing. You know, what have you been using? We would love it. This, this is a one-way forum. I wish we would be able to have some conversations. So we may be doing some Zoom calls and things in the future where we can have open conversations. Bring your questions. Let's dive deeper into these resources that are available for us. You know, we all have struggles. We all have challenges, but we don't need to stay stuck in them. There are ways for us to move through the emotions and, and some of the physical feelings that we're having. Yeah, I love the conversations too. And some of the most fun comes with when we search for a Bible verse and I can search for it in the translation that I'm using. Um, you can search for it in the translation that you're using and they give us a just a little different twist of the words that they are saying. It's the same verse, but it's just a little bit different vocabulary that's used that sometimes one version really speaks to us like wow like this is so old but like it's so meaningful for me today in what this is um or your version might have a, a different translation that's a little bit more helpful for me to understand this confusing old verse too <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that can be really helpful but combining it with actually being able to experience the oil or look at pictures of the cypress tree or whatever topic you're looking at helps really bring these things into reality, like making yeah. it real, not just some old imaginary story. Now we can find ways to relate to it, talk about it with others. Like what is, what is this? What do you think this scripture story is talking about? Or what have you researched about it in some of our other books? Um, Lisa referenced the oils of scripture book that she um, is grabbing a lot of information from. This is fabulous. Um, the other one that we really love, yep, Healing Oils of the Bible, Dr. David Stewart. He is um, sharing some of the depth of so much of this too. So um, keep exploring. It's so fascinating and we can't absorb it all the first time. I know every time I read these and reread these, I'm like, oh yeah, why didn't I notice that part before? Or even when we're looking into the scripture stories, I know I've read this section before, but I don't remember that part. All of a sudden it's new and it has different meanings. So 
keep layering these things together as it grows your personal knowledge, but also it grows your faith to make this more real and applicable into everyday life and how it inspires you and moves you forward in your day. Yeah. It's so fun to do this, but it's so fun to do it together with other people too. So reach out and have those conversations. You can tell we're both just gush about this stuff. So we, and we're uh, not done yet. We have more, <laughs> more next week. We have, uh, we have Cassia, we have uh, Onika, Murr, mm -hmm. and Cinnamon. C no, Cassia is Cinnamon. Yeah. It's a type of Cinnamon. There's uh, one. Cistus. Cistus. Thank Cistus. you. I didn't have them in my notes in front of me. I was like, what's next? What are, what are the ones that are left? So yeah, we have mm. four more that we're going to dive deep into again next week. So come on back. Don't give up. And if you missed out on the first uh, couple of sessions, go back and listen to them. We're excited every week. And and I don't know, my excitement seems to be building. We did all that. We did our favorites, you know, myrrh and frankincense in the beginning. And I thought that was going to like, we were going to go downhill from there, but it was like, no, no, this week was a great study. And I loved what we were doing discovering about cedar wood and sandalwood and and hyssop i just bringing all of those together and cypress being a favorite for both of us so next week who knows these are not my favorite oils we're getting smellier and smellier for me so i am excited <laughs> to see what new i can discover to share with all of you paula we will see you again next thursday thanks for your insight and bringing the emotional component into our conversation this week we're doing then and now and i hope that you guys had a great takeaway and and you apply something I hope you, I hope you 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 know dig into your oil stash and apply something that you learned today and we'll see you again next week. Bye everybody.